Hey guys, it's Jamie and Joseph, the Oily Travelers Dash Board Diaries for uh, April, what is it, Friday, April the 6th yeah. today? 2018. Uh, 2018, yeah. We are actually uh, en route to check out um, the possibility of a seasonal spot at uh, Emerald Lake, which is out towards Guelph, Ontario. And uh, yeah, we're gonna fire up the video here because just had a few things he wanted to run by me. So he's gonna get her rolling. So here goes. I want to talk about education and homeschooling. Um, obviously, being full time RV years, we are homeschooling or something different than a no normal public or private school. Just something that I saw this morning and I give all the copyrights to Try Bonaquest. They don't call it homeschooling, they call it world schooling. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Travel the world to educate yourself. So instead of the homeschooling term, term it is now going to be referred to as world schooling. I like it. Um, the reason why we want to homeschool versus normal public schooling, uh, I think pretty much everyone would agree that they're not every, not every kid is the same. Not every kid learns the same way. Some are able to sit down in a classroom and listen to a monologue coming from up front, and some kids just aren't. And I think we'll both agree that <laughs> ours are not. <laughs> yeah, our kids cannot sit down and learn that way. I mean, mind you, with that being said, take a look at the parents. It's not like yeah. the, the apple fall fell, fell far, far from the tree. I think, uh, where are they going? Spirited. Spirited, Spirited children. Because <laughs> um, again, I, I know a lot of people would agree that there's a lot of topics that are taught in school, public school, because that's what I'll go with, because that's what I know about, that are completely useless in life. Like, what's that meme that's on the internet? One more day that One I more day that I didn't use algebra. Algebra, yeah. <laughs> yeah but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that is not taught in school that is absolutely vital yeah. to a person's education. Well, whether it's how to control your budget, yeah. uh, what is a credit card for, how does it help you, how does it hurt you, uh, how to do your taxes, which would be nice for us to learn because we don't even know how to do our taxes. And... I've done my own once, twice, actually. <laughs> no, I, I don't even do that. I, no interest, but at the same time, maybe if I learned how to do it, maybe I would have an interest in it. Um, These but are all important factors in life, yeah. Yeah, and there's so many things that... Well, even we talked about, sorry to interrupt, but we've talked a lot about how we want to educate the kids to learn how to become entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, then just think outside the box. Yeah. Like, not everybody fits in that bubble of you sit in the class and you listen, and you get taught, and you're told what to do and, and how to think. You're allowed to learn on your own at your own pace doing whatever it is that makes you happy because that's what we always talk about we always talk about freedom we're always we're freedom seekers we're always looking for freedom and now that comes in very very different forms for every person three for you. you she has three for us um Thanks, Sam. <laughs> but that's it everybody has to find their own definition of freedom for us the fact that nobody owns us and by owns us, I mean, we don't have a mortgage that way the bank doesn't own us. We don't have any car payments that way the bank doesn't own us. We do have jobs. Uh, we're both flight attendants for a major major airline in Canada. So yeah, we're still kind of owned there. Oh, it was just vibrating like crazy. Yeah. Sorry guys. Um, so that's it, you gotta find what works for you. And I want my kids to be able to discover by themselves what works for them. Um, well, and I think with the word world schooling, I don't think about just the kids. Like, I, I actually think it, it's, I think of education for all of us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we talk about that all the time, that our journey is still bending and unfolding and changing gears and we're figuring it out. We don't have a, a map to follow. We're just, yeah. we're just trusting our guts and, you know, we did a post about that, like how this is just us just Thinking of, yeah, thinking outside the box, but, you know, like, just going with what works for us. It's funny, when we were yeah. talking less yesterday or the other day, I said to you, it's taken me 39 years to, to actually be able to say exactly what I want and what I don't want. And that's, you know, I grew up sort of learning how to be pleasing and, and friendly. 
really liked you know, in all of that, you sometimes forget how to just say, yeah, you know what, I like this, I don't like this, I want that, I don't want that. Yeah. Just speaking up for what you want. So yeah, it definitely takes some And we've, because we're flight attendants, obviously we meet people who are very like-minded very often, like gypsy souls. And one thing that I've always noticed about people who travel a lot, there are certain values that come automatically when you get outside of your comfort zone. Respect, yeah. open-mindedness, yeah. um, willing to take adventures, which I guess also get encompassed into open-mindedness. But these are things that are very important to us. Um, unfortunately, we see it too often on the plane also. Parents and children alike, doesn't matter the age, no. respect is something that is so Manners. lost right now. Manners. So lost. And it's funny because anytime, ever said, could you turn that down a little bit, please? Yeah. At three. Um, <laughs> said at three. Anytime that I have children, children on the plane who are very polite and use their please and their thank yous, which unfortunately is a rarity, I always, always make a point of telling the mom, Mom, your kids are very well mannered. Good job. And everybody just lights up when you say that to them. And we've had that happen to us too. When we were out in Lake Country, British Columbia, we had our kids in a little drop-in program. And when we left, the, the teachers there, Teacher Ali and uh, Teacher, Taylor. Teacher Taylor, told us that our kids are incredibly well mannered. They're very polite, very respectful, and like. That's nice to hear <laughs> as a parent for so many reasons, but just because you're on auto repeat constantly and you yeah. think, am I actually making any headway here? Like, is anything <laughs> sinking in when I ask them to repeat and say please and thank yous? It is exhausting. It's exhausting. It's a constant reminder, but at the same time, once somebody else sees them or has them without you around and they tell you, well, you kids are incredibly play, you're like, oh my God, thank you. it's actually working. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going through. Yeah, um, so education, I think is a huge, huge part of our why we decided to travel and RV full time. Um, whether it's world schooling or whether it's you know open, uh, open mindedness, respect, just seeing something different, thinking outside the box, because hopefully that develops into qualities that they have that whatever situation they end up in might look like a bind, but if you think outside the box, it might be an easy fix. So just things that we're trying to instill in our kids. Or sometimes, you know, as you're traveling through life or you, you think everything is going wrong and really it's actually just creating a new path. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to think of the best example. Well, do you remember when we did the move from Calgary to Kelowna? Yeah. And, you know, we were driving across the country and, and the house deal fell through at the last oh minute. Oh my god, and, that's, you know, like that's these, a whole other dashboard diary. <laughs> that, that was messy. But it, your yeah. world seems like it's collapsing in that moment, and yet if you can work through it and just sort of so sit you, again. You like, buy a house, you move everything, you head to the house, and then you find out once you get there, like, yeah, you're not getting the keys today. I don't know when you're going to get the keys. I don't know if you will ever get the keys. You're like, yeah, we, we had some definite hiccups. Yeah, that But went my point sideways. being, like, it, it was devastating in the moment. But going back to what you're saying, like, education and, and things that you, um, key survival skills that you don't necessarily learn in school. Like, how do you, how your actions or reactions to things can shape moving forward. Like, yeah, yeah. we had a little meltdown, but we kind of just we had each other and we were like okay you know what bottom line we're fed yeah we're, we're, we're like, healthy <laughs> we're you know we will find semi-sane semi-sane <laughs> we will find a, a shelter you know and it all worked out in the end so it was, it was good but it's, it's, that's yeah we just got way off on another top my yeah. point being like learning the skills like coping skills and, and how to respectfully just yeah yourself up and, and dust yourself off and be like, okay, that's different. It led us in a completely different direction. So. Yeah. And another thing as far as education is how to put things in perspective. Like Jay was saying, like, yeah, we didn't have a place to sleep that night. Like the world was falling apart, but at the same time, we have each other, we're healthy. It's like, we'll figure it out, whatever. 
but we want kids to learn how to put things in perspective. Yes, your train just broke. Okay, put this in perspective. You have trains to play with. Some kids don't even have that to play with. Some kids have to fight every single day to just find food. And that's when you travel and you see different things. We don't want them to only see the negative things that we see while we travel. Like we saw some pretty bad stuff over in Florida. But at the same time, find some good yesterday. everywhere you go. What happened yesterday? There was a, a takedown outside of oh, yeah. the McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> SWAT, police. Guns. guns. It was actually kind of scary. Masks and helmets. Like the whole thing went down at the McDonald's that we were going to so the kids could go play in the playland. Yeah, we wanted to give them some time in the playland. Yeah, perspective. Jeez, so your train might have just broken or the tracks fell apart, but that guy just got arrested with a gun in his face. Yeah. Perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe those two don't really go together. <laughs> I'm so, sure they do somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that bit on education. I, I like, turn back to like world education. What did you say? Sorry, what was it? World schooling. World, world schooling. Instead of homeschooling. Because people always ask us, like, when we tell them that we travel full time in an RV, the first question that I always hear is like, like, once they find out our kids are four and two, oh, so what are you gonna do when they go to school? My response is like, well, they're not. And then you pause for a second to see the reaction. People automatically, their, their heads start spinning, like, what, is your child gonna become homeless? Is your child gonna be educate, uneducated? And he's gonna, no, there are different alternatives. There are other ways of homeschooling. They will get classroom environment, but well, alternative classroom, so. They do right now. And yeah. Drop-ins. You just said that because yesterday when we were at the pass office, um, the lady was like, why is your son not in school today? And I said, well, we homeschool. And she kind of looked at me and she goes, well, how long are you going to do that for? And I said, well, as long as they want to. You know, if they yeah. ever to come to us and say, hey, you know what? Like, I want to do organized sports or I really want to go to school. We'll settle down and let them go to school. And I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. But um, my point being, she was like, well, you and I laugh about this all the time. Well, are you worried that they're going to be socially awkward? My response to that every single time is, am I socially awkward? Is Jamie socially awkward? Yeah, true. They will obviously say no. So then well, why would why my would kids be? be socially awkward if we're not? Kids always look at what we're doing. So if they see us interacting with people at the grocery store, in a restaurant, at the park, wherever, isn't that what they'll probably follow? And when you're in the campground, we always talk to our neighbors. Yeah. On the left, on the right, you talk to them automatically. And if they have kids, well, as you, you know, you're going to get the kids to interact. But then again, we go to a playground, a playland whatsoever, and our kids will run up to another kid and say, hey, how's it going? My name's Brantley. I'm four. Want to play? <laughs> and funny. people shy away from our kids. Like, so who's this socially awkward socially one awkward here? here? And the other thing is, oh. we work really hard to um, constantly have educational environments for them. Like, right when we were in BC, they had a program called Strong Start. Yeah. Um, and here in Ontario, it's called Early Years. And so at least, well, I'd say two to three days a week, um, just to, to implement a little bit of structure and, and sanity for us, we take them to, um, it's, called a, it's called Early Years, or Early On, now they're changing it to. And it's, uh, it's like a playground environment, it's like a preschool. Um, it's, again, hands-on, so you, as a parent, you stay with the kids. But they, so they you, have, play with, you play with toys? And then there's crafts, there's, crafts, there's books all over the books, place. And at a certain time, what is it, 11? 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 30, they do circle time. Circle time. So everybody comes in a circle, they all sing songs, and then they read a book, and everybody has to follow that program. It's actually a really amazing program because it, oh. A, you get the parents out to socialize a little bit, it gets you out of the house, which has been super awesome. With, With this, this weather outside, I don't know weather. if you can see, but. Oh my goodness. Sucks like, banana balls. You guys can't really see right now, but we're like driving through, a, see. driving through a I don't want to slushy see snowstorm-ish. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it is, you know, sometimes it's a little bit more work. We, we rely heavily on YMCA's. When we were in Florida, we did um, <clears throat> a lot of the YMCA programs. Yeah. Um, you know, it's also good for us. Like I would take them and sometimes go and do a, like a Zumba class or something. And um, those ones have child mining at a lot of the YMCA's so you can leave them for, I believe it was up to two hours. Two hours, yeah. Just, go do yeah, yoga class, class or get on the laptop class, work, whatever. Give you a little break, especially when Joseph would be gone for five days at a time. Uh, that can be challenging. 
any any parents out there that uh, fly solo for any time, it uh, it has its challenges. So that's yeah, always absolutely. a great program to yeah. An advantage of being full time RVers is because you're living in what 300 or 350 square feet that we have, it forces you to be outside. We're so really missing that actually right now. Because yeah, because we our homeschooling or alternative schooling or now world schooling if you're always staying indoor inside your house because you have a nice big house and it's comfortable and all that and i get it well we don't have that we have a very small home so it forces us to go outside therefore you get involved in activities therefore you go on adventures and the kids have now it's so ingrained in them that they're constantly asking, asking like mommy daddy adventure go adventure, cool adventure. Okay. where are we going right now bc Go venture. Where are we go, bud? We go venture. Yeah. Good job, guys. So that's a good thing about RV is that it forces you to be out, to socialize, to get out there, to find activities, to find day activities, day adventures. And yeah, that was my point. That was it. Over and out. I think so. Cool. Cheers, guys. Peace.